Writing and editing in Google Docs can get really messy really quickly. Have you ever wished there was a better writing app? We have. That's why we made ButterDocs. ButterDocs seamlessly combines an outlining app, a notes app, and a writing app, so you can see your notes and outline next to your document as you write. Plus, ButterDocs offers a new way to collaborate. Let's take a look at how it works. So outlining in ButterDocs is done with blocks, which is uh, what you're seeing right here. They're collapsed, but you can expand them like this. You can think of a block as a digital index card that's linked to your document. So with blocks, you can outline, you know, or figure out the structure of your document, whether that's a novel like you're looking at right now, where each of these blocks represents a chapter of the novel, or if it's an email drip campaign where uh, each block represents a different email in that campaign, or perhaps a blog post like this one right here, where each of these blocks represents a different section of the blog post. You give the blocks a title and a description, which is what you plan to write in that section of the document. And since collaboration begins at the outlining stage, you can also comment on the blocks and uh, notify your collaborators. And you can do a few other things. For instance, you can uh, set a status on the block, like we'll say this one's in progress, and assign one of your collaborators who's supposed to write it. That way everyone stays on the same page, both literally and figuratively. One of the really cool things about blocks is that they're actually linked to your document. So for instance, if I wanna to jump to one of these sections like block comments, I can just click here on open block in document, this little target, and boom, I've jumped here to that uh, part of my document. And I can also restructure my document by dragging and dropping these blocks. I can do that on the board here where we just were, or over here in the content sidebar. So for instance, block comments, I can uh, take it and drag it up to there, and boom, it just jumped above block notes. So super easy to uh, restructure your document. And then let's say I'm gonna write this section here. I can open it here to see the description of what I was planning to write. And I can also open up my notes here on the right. So I can see both my outline and my notes, have them at hand. There's no need to scroll up and down your document or you know keep flipping through tabs or something to reference what I'm going to write. Uh, everything's right here, saves a lot of time. I also mentioned version control earlier, uh, which is another great feature that I love. So if I go to my drafts here and I click on an older draft, let's say there was something I cut, like, ah, oh, this sentence, I cut this, but you know what? I actually wanna put it back in my document. I can just undo it here with revert mode, uh, click sure. And now when I go back to my main document, let's see here, that sentence will be waiting for me right there. One of the main ways we tend to collaborate with each other in documents is through comments. But if a document has a lot of comments, it can get really hard to figure out what's going on, what's relevant to what you're doing right now. That's why you can tag comments in ButterDocs. So I can easily leave a comment just by you know highlighting, hitting comment. I can uh, tag my collaborator, Bill Shakespeare, and say this is, and then hashtag, ooh, I've already created it, brilliant. And now this comment has been tagged as brilliant. So when I go over here to the comment sidebar to look at all of my comments, it's again, sometimes if there's a lot, it can be hard to tell what you wanna see. So let's just look at the comments that are tagged as brilliant. Oh, I can say, all I can say is brilliant. Great insight, brilliant. This is brilliant, Micah. It's really nice to be appreciated by your fake coworkers. Of course, we have live collaboration. Uh, you'll see an avatar for each of the uh, collaborators that you've invited to your document. If they're live, you'll see the little uh, green light. And you can customize the color for each collaborator to easily see who is writing what in the document. But here's the thing about live collaboration. It sucks. Or at least sometimes it sucks because it's really hard to write when someone's watching over your shoulder. So I have William Shakespeare here, or uh, Bill Shakespeare, as I like to call him, uh, as one of my collaborators, and that's a lot of pressure uh, to have uh, Bill Shakespeare watching you uh, as you write. I don't want that. I, I need a place to be bad. I need a private space um, that he can't see where I can write. So that's why in ButterDocs we have private drafts. So I can come up here, click branch copy, give it a name. I'm just gonna call this Micah's draft. 
I'm going to set the draft visibility to uh, invitees. And since I'm not inviting anyone, that means no one else is going to be able to see this. And I'm going to do start marking changes so I can see what's different in this draft. Then I'm going to create that draft. And now you'll see here there was the main draft and Micah's draft. So I can make changes to Micah's draft without affecting the main draft. And you'll also see that Bill's avatar is no longer here. He can't see what I'm doing here. You see this little lock here because it's hidden. So that's pretty cool because it means that this is a private space for me to write. So I can come down here and write whatever I want poorly. And no one else can see this because this is only affecting Micah's draft. If I go back to the main draft, it hasn't appeared here. It's only in Micah's draft. Now, if I get to the point where I want Bill Shakespeare and whoever my other collaborators are to watch this or to see this, I can click uh, here, publish to collaborators, and then they'll be able to see it. So it doesn't have to stay private. You can share it with them when you're ready. But Let's say that I, I like this sentence a lot and I want to get it from here into my main draft. Maybe I've made some other changes. You know, I just sort of uh, deleted this phrase for some reason. I can approve or reject which of the changes make it to my main draft. So I can come up here, click this arrow, merge into main draft. And this is kind of a review step where, again, you get to choose which of the changes make it over. So these are the two changes I made. If you cut something, it'll be in red like this. And if you added something, it'll be in green like this. And I can accept or discard these changes. So this one, a change I made, it doesn't really make sense. I, I don't want to do this. I want this change to go away. So I'm going to discard this one. But this is a sentence that I don't even know if it makes sense. Uh, but whatever, I'm gonna go with it. Uh, I'm gonna accept it into my document. And then I click merge into main, confirm merge. And now you'll see that Micah's draft, that private draft went away and merged back here into the main draft. And this sentence that I wrote in my uh, private draft is here in my main draft. So that's branch and merge. I created a branch copy, I edited that copy, and then I merged the changes I want back here. And I had a private space in which to write. You may be familiar with this if you've worked with Git or GitHub before. It comes from programming, but we're bringing it to writing. Another great use of branch and merge is to create sharing drafts. Sharing drafts are a way where you can get the contributions of your collaborators into your document where you want them. So all their expertise, all their knowledge, their proofreading, whatever it is, you want to get that, you know, contributed to your document, but you get to maintain control over which of those changes makes it into the document. So let me show you what I mean. You create a sharing draft similarly to the way that you create a private draft. You create a branch copy and you can say, you know, this is, I'm gonna call this Frank's edits. The difference is that I'm going to go down here to invitees and I'm gonna do uh, Frank. And when you do this, one, you say changes require your review. If you want Frank just to be able to directly uh, change the document, go to no. But I'm going to uh, stick to yes, because I want to review all of Frank's changes. And what Frank is going to get this note here that's going to kind of explain to him what this draft is, what's going on, and how it works. So it's Mike is inviting you to make suggested edits. Uh, your changes will be approved, reviewed and approved by Micah before being incorporated into the document. Click the thumbs up when you're done in your edits and ready for Micah to review them. So it's pretty simple, but you can also add to this. Um, you can delete that or give more context on your own. Maybe, you know, you're going to say specifically what it is that you want Frank to do. Um, because if you're trying to get Frank's contributions, is he is he proofreading? Is he adding a section? Is he, you know, looking at something you've done? You can add that here. And then you click create. Now we have this draft called Frank's edits. So Frank will get an invitation to this document. So if I come over here just to my browser here, I'm logged in here as Frank. And you see here, writing ops blog post, Mike invited you to collaborate on a draft. So accept. And now Frank gets that message that you left for him. And again, what was added for him as well. So he gets this draft and that's the little helpful guide if you want to learn how this works. And because Frank wasn't invited to the full draft, only this one, he just sees Frank's edits. He doesn't see the main draft. So Frank comes here and Frank 
does what Frank is supposed to do. Whatever the changes were, you know, that he was supposed to do, he was doing that, he's adding something here, changing this, all of the edits that Frank does. And then when Frank is done, you'll see that there's this nice little thumbs up request review. So when Frank does that, you're going to get a little notification or if you're in it, you'll see it's green and you'll be like, okay, Frank uh, request a review. And then when you merge it, you can look at his changes or you can go to the merge and you'll see all of Frank's changes, right? Okay, he added something here, he changed this, and you can choose, be like, ooh, I love his addition, this is brilliant, that makes no sense, I don't want that, I'm gonna discard that, and uh, I want this, this is gonna be my document. And then when I merge it, and I confirm the merge, what Frank did has been added to uh, the document. So again, I was able to easily get his input, get him involved in the process, but I didn't lose control over the document. I got to choose what he put in, which is just a really nice feature. All right, so that's Butterdocs in a nutshell. I hope you're excited about it and you see the possibilities about how it can help you. Um, we're super excited about this. We're super excited to launch this. And if you're a writer who cares about their workflow and who is looking to improve it, we hope you uh, check it out and let us know what you think.